welcome to the ospo uh thank you for joining please add yourself in the minutes and the quorum is very light today maybe because of the travel or because of the time change i'm not sure who knows i don't know things seem to ebb and flow sometimes you know what i mean yep so we'll see for the next meeting i don't know uh, we'll keep the same timing otherwise we'll then think of the timings um we can keep the same time i mean i've been thinking about <clears throat> how we transition this working group right the aspo working group and we kind of had discussions in the asia pacific call about this like this came up like how this all kind of fits together um i think once we're once we've kind of done everything like renamed things and kind of set out our mission statement we should probably reach out to anna right encourage participation you know that kind of stuff so i think we can do that okay so then, i uh, have i wondered if you i mean do you want to continue to run the working group as the aspo working group you know so like you were running it as the value working group and i don't want to just make the assumption that you <laughs> you know like if we change it <laughs> like yeah no i'm fine i'm fine okay uh, this because okay. it works and it aligns with my work and research so yeah I, i'm fine okay one of the things i would if we can kind of get the mission aligned i mean one of the things that i would kind of like to do is if we can get members from the to do group okay. if there would be a member from there that would help lead okay. the working group not to yeah that, that's that's also but you know just trying to create that sense of ownership that might be yep. yeah totally agree because okay. like focus is aligned in their direction so yeah it'll be helpful to have their representation okay yep i agree and like a role of leadership would be great i saw a blanket yep. okay so uh if i have written uh, uh first thing is like we need to change the name of the repo and i was not sure this will break the links of the website and all the metrics release so i think we need to coordinate with kevin on this can you do that yes i i'll ping kevin and ask him like what needs to be done and then we can rename the repo okay i swear like we renamed the DEI working group it was it was like diversity dash inclusion or something like that and we renamed it and it just auto like i think it i think you can do it without any impact i don't think we had to do anything in the DEI working group so my only concern is like if you uh, if i rename the repo on the github uh, because website pulls the metrics from oh, the okay. github yeah independently of you know. yes okay yeah so then all the links that are there in on the website for the uh, ospo working group will like break everything oh, okay so it's mostly just the website sorry i missed that part okay yes yes like if i rename the repo it'll be fine but only the website that is pulling all the detail from the github repo will break okay that is where my concern is so i want to coordinate with kevin on this uh, and once he says go ahead then i'll change the name and uh, maybe you two could just find a time like 30 minutes just to sit down yes. and you just you change the name and then yes just the name on the website so it like from an efficiency perspective yes okay yep that is the plan so <clears throat> Okay. and then the second agenda is i have written a small uh, mission statement based on our previous discussion which uh, you all can take a look maybe uh so i'm on a chrome book i'll not be able to share much on the zoom because i didn't brought my heavy laptop <laughs> venad has a laptop <laughs> weighs like 9000 pounds. <laughs> yeah, I I have kept it at home. I've put it on so I like remote desktop it for my all this stuff 
but like for Zoom. <laughs> it's great. We bought it like a years ago to do like large scale data analytics stuff. And he's just not doing that anymore, but he still has the laptop. <laughs> yeah. And the the power the power thing is like as big as your laptop, Elizabeth. Like it's like <laughs> this big. And when yep. we're, if we're in a room, it makes so much noise. We're always like, shut the stupid. <laughs> it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's really a strange laptop. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's a great laptop. I've enjoyed using it <laughs> because it runs so fast. It's like blaze. You <laughs> come on, it's done. I mean, nobody's going to take it, right? So. <laughs> no, it'll slow it's anybody it's down. <laughs> That's right. It's like trying to steal like a like one of those kettlebells, like a 15-pound kettlebell and trying to run with it. <laughs> Hi, Anita. Hi, everyone. Hi, um... Let me share the meeting minutes with you, Anita. Oh, um, Vinod, did you, when you were writing the statement, because I was looking at this as well, did you kind of go through these points? Yes. Okay. So I've captured all these four points in, in there. Okay. So the mission of the, maybe we could take a minute to just yep. kind of work on this. So... Yeah. I'll stop sharing my screen for a second, but if we could all just take like a minute. Yep.
I like this. Thanks for putting this together, Vinod. It's yep. so much easier to work off of a framework. Yep. Uh, so should we then? We can probably accept most changes. I don't think anything okay. is fundamental. And I like it because it's like we're working on metrics, metrics models, software, and stories. Yep. So in this group then for people, like for the first one, if I was to, I'll share my screen again. Um, so for, you know, for like point one, stop suggesting. For point one, so will we be developing metrics in this working group? Do you see that happening? Okay. Yes. For point two, will we be developing metrics models in this working group? Do you see that also happening? Yes. Okay. I think these two have now become uh, like integrated or integral part of each other. We developed a model uh, to so, uh, address some issue or some problem, and then we come, okay, we are missing these metrics, and then we develop them. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I think metrics models are actually becoming part of every working group at this point. Yes. It's starting to make me wonder <laughs> how much we need the metrics model meeting. I think we still need it just because of the timing of it, but Okay, so will we develop software? Probably not. No, I, I'm not sure because Sean uh, was of the view in the last meeting that he wants to deploy those and show the examples. So how, so we'll, how out of this working group will we facilitate that? Uh, that is purely dependent on the Augur support or Grimoire lab. Not like as a, we as a group will not be able to do that. Okay. So maybe that's, maybe that's where we hand it off, hand off the metrics models okay. to the metrics models group and they work with De uh, deployment of it. Deploy. Okay. Because to your point, Matt, about all the working groups making yeah. metrics models now, like that's impossible for Sean or someone from Grimoire Lab to be at every single meeting all the time, Agreed. everywhere. So if we just maybe all funnel it towards the metrics models and there's just one place that they have to worry about. Yeah, I like out. that. Hey, Johnny. Nice to have you here. Hi. And your, and your pupper. Dogs are always welcome at all of our meetings. <laughs> but not being <laughs> share the minutes. Yep, uh, I've pasted the minutes in the chat, Johnny, for you. Okay. Um, so, Elizabeth, to your point, like, do you think that not just the OSPO working group here, but also uh, like the other working groups like DEI or wherever it might be, that it's always like the responsibility of that working group to kind of hand off the models that we develop with the hope of deployment? Okay. Uh, but one thing that I've observed, like in the past few meetings, uh, while we were changing as few have joined, they are specifically looking for the deployment aspect of it. Right. So how do we ensure that we can like make that visible to people? So that requires coordination with Grimoire Lab and okay. uh, Augur for that part. Okay, not quite sure. Elizabeth, do you have thoughts on that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, 
I mean, is there any, do you think there's any value in asking folks from the OSPO working group if they have an interest in helping with the deployment of these metrics models? The OSPO yeah. specific models? Yep, I think so. Uh, that that needs to be discussed with that group in coordination to see what their opinions are or what they okay. want to see. Okay, I think we need to think, okay. Because I, I kind of agree that like the, the common working group or the, maybe not risk, um, I, I don't know. I just, I feel like this is going to become one of the most applied working groups. Yes. If, if it's tied to a particular business function, like an OSPO, that um, like none of our other working groups are tied to a business function like that or an organizational function. Um, so we might really need to think about how we continue to represent the metrics models quickly for people here. So the things that are apl applied, they come out of say the DEI working group, they kind of have a longer arc, like the event badging, that's a deployed deployment of the models or project badging. It's a deployment of a model. Um, right. But I'm, I would be afraid that if we develop metrics models and then they just kind of sit there as markdown files, <laughs> it's not gonna do much yeah. good for anybody. Yeah. yeah, and maybe that's that's the that's the problem that we solve is the visibility of them, like you said, between the two groups, like just okay. to make sure that this group knows that there are new metrics models. Okay. I don't know that people in this group would be experts on deploying. Like, I'm no. just thinking of like the actual like writing the Jupyter notebooks. Like, I, you know, right. how, like I think that that's also as an aside. That's an issue that we also need to solve. Is like the pool of people that can deploy these is pretty small that could actually like write the stuff to deploy these right. that pool of people is pretty small and so i think we we would be we, we would be well off to grow that community of folks that can yes yeah, it's, like, it's like the classic like funnel problem right like yeah. we can't just keep throwing more stuff at the top of the hopper and then yeah. ex expect that funnel to <laughs> <laughs> Because it's mostly like Sean. <laughs> yeah, like, it's basically Sean, just Sean. Need, I think my first like, contact, yeah. contact Sean the, is what it was. <laughs> the capacity is there. Like, for example, I can uh, quickly deploy those models, but uh, the, uh, the time it takes is huge commitment, which at this stage, I'm unable to give it uh, the group. So, so maybe this is also like, um, I don't know. I, I have no idea. We, I think this is, we need to think about this. Yep. I see so, Johnny has some questions in chat too. Oh, okay, great. Thanks. Yeah. We, um, let's see. I tend to type a lot so that I don't interrupt the conversations that are happening. It is a pleasure to meet you too. Oh, no, that's totally cool. Um, and where are you, Johnny? Uh, I'm in Houston, Texas. Okay. And are you with a company? Did you come across this to do group? I am. Um, I've uh, been trying to get Grimoire Labs and Baturgia to come in and do an implementation for us. I'm with, um, I work for a company called Input Output okay. um, Global. And we um, are the engineering and research company behind Cardano. I don't know if you're any of you are familiar with crypto space at all. Okay, but we're in the process of trying to um, more fully open source uh, Cardano and build a, an uh, open source organization, members based organization around that with an OSPO to look after the um, code base and the project. Okay. Itself. Yep. So makes sense. Okay, this is this is basically my day job right now. <laughs> okay, are, do you have an OSPO right now, or are you forming it? Um. I'm doing a lot of education for folks on why, what an OSPO does and what, why an OSPO is needed and how okay. to actually build a good one, but I'm learning on the job. 
Okay, no, that makes sense. That totally makes yeah. sense. So the, the group here, just to be like, what we do is we try to help on that list. We develop metrics, which are kind of these small atomic units, which would be like age of a pull request or length of an issue. You know what I mean? Like yeah. these small things. Um, and then we bring them together in metric models. So a model would be like responsiveness of a community and it would contain a variety of metrics. You know what I mean? So you'd have seven metrics that kind of give you insight around community responsiveness. That's point two. Point three is making sure that like we can build these models, but we have to ensure that they're deployable for folks because the technology hurdle can sometimes be a bit much for an OSPO or it's just not something that you want to do perhaps. You know what I mean? You want to focus on other things. So how do we ensure that we can actually visualize these models? And so that's kind of what we're talking about here. You're kind of building an ontology of... Yeah, exactly. Yes, we've been doing that kind of the whole time in the chaos project. And we've been doing it around um, metri individual metrics for a long time. And the models are probably, I don't know, nine months old as we bring these together. So yes, an ontology around models as well. Um, guidance advice. So what are your questions are... Can you kind of dig into those a little bit? Well, because he says, uh, you know, I, I think that's the the metrics model gives the context, right? Yeah. Because it's 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 um there implied within the metrics model. Yeah. Because you know, you just the thing you had to listed the four points. We will develop metrics. We will develop metrics models. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. And it's somebody who's kind of new to some of these things. It's just like okay, I see the metric. Why is that useful? Why should I care? Right? Yep. Yep. That's, that is the, we get it. And that's what we were getting asked a lot. Is what do I care about the age of an issue? Like, why might this matter? You know, and the model doesn't provide context on that. And okay. then my second comment was, cause, cause you were kind of talking a little bit earlier um, about you know, how you go from the conceptual to the uh, implementation mm -hmm. details, yeah. right? And so I think, you know, that is kind of the difference between a, a kind of a platform independent conceptual model and a very platform specific implementation model. Yeah, and we're not, yes, okay, I get you. And we're not quite sure how to, that's what we're talking, we're not quite sure how to solve that problem right now. Um, other than just like, I, we don't think it's fair to just say to everybody, okay, here are the models, like knock yourself out in its deployment. Like that, that doesn't help the chaos project much yeah. by just kind of kicking it down the road, you know? Yeah, I think I think sometimes um, embedded within the ontology is some more colloquial taxonomy of, um, you know, it's very different for if you're the taxonomy of different types of open source projects, whether you're, I don't know, Kubernetes or whether you're Joe Schmo's, you know, uh, NPM library yep. right, is, is very different, I think, right? We agree. Yeah. And so we're all kind of our, one of our things is we're just trying to help people move off zero. So we're, we're value agnostic in our models because you're, I mean, something for Kubernetes might mean something completely different for an, an, you know, an NPM library of some sort. So just trying to help orient people. And I will say, Johnny, to your point about the platform independence. So when we're developing a model or a metric, an individual metric, we try to be as agnostic as possible. So we will try to think about like, how is this term used in GitLab versus GitHub or, you know, different things. And so, um, but I think the, the challenge is like Matt just said, when we're trying to deploy it, well, we have to give them a way to deploy this. So like, do we have a, a version for those who are using GitHub? Here's where you find the issues. Those who are using Jira, those who are using GitLab, like there's a, it's a little bit more complicated when we try to make, make it for everybody, you know, but yet also give them actual data that they can use. So I think that we're still trying to sort all that out. Yeah. Um, that's would it help to maybe do some kind of like persona user experience style focus on like here's the engineer, this engineer work, you know, like give them personalities, names and identities, right? Um, what, yeah, that's what, what we've been trying to do. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That we bring to the metric models, okay, looking from the perspective, okay, as a, 
uh, OSPO manager, what uh, what I am interested in and uh, looking at the metrics. As a contributor, what I want to understand using those perspective, we are trying to incorporate those in the mo metric model. Okay. Uh, we have a section called uh, who uh, who is interested from what angle in that. Yeah, user stories. Okay. User stories. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the personas behind those user stories as well. Right. Uh, I have to run today. Sure. I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, I did oh. want to pop in, say hi, observe hi. how things are going. I, I popped my email in there. If you can add oh. me to any uh, document libraries or anything, I'll try sure. to kind of okay. asynchronously consume and circle back with you next time. All right. Can I add you yeah. to the Slack? Are you on the Slack? I'm on the Slack. Yes, I am. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, okay. I, you can find my introduction and from newcomers from I think a few days ago. So okay. Okay. That. Thank All you, right. Johnny. Take care, Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Right. All right. So then, the, I guess the last one. I don't think we have point three solved. Um, is like I'm guessing this one is capturing the stories. So like, a com company A is like I deployed this metric model, and it helped me do these things is that right yes it's like uh talking to the ospos and learning how they've employed uh, deployed it how, how they're making use of it okay and sharing it with others so that like if i'm if somebody has already deployed a certain model and using it in their organization if they can share their stories people uh, can learn from it and Okay, that's what I thought. It, that's what I thought it meant, and I like that as well. That we can. Yes. Yes. So we'd have to probably come up with a mechanism by which we would do that. You know what I mean? Like so, we may not do it in this meeting. So, so I've been thinking on this too, uh, and one thing we that we do regularly is uh, chaos cost. And on that, I've seen people coming and sharing how they are using the metric or in different ways. Maybe we can uh, bring that or align it in somehow in this. This was just a thought that I was thinking on this direction. OK. Um, you know, I also thought, you know, how, did you see the metric of the month? Yes. Yes. So we, we could do like an OSPO metric model of the month? Or OSPO story of the month uh, along uh, uh, along the metrics or models. Yeah, something like this. So I mean, that's something that we could try to publish. I think we're going to have to do that work would be like yes. that, you know? Yes, and we have to talk to a certain uh, OSPO and ask them, or maybe if mm -hmm. they have some post or blog that we can share, or some somehow we have to publicize those things. Yep. So Elizabeth, we're just talking about how do we capture stories? And we have mentioned, of course, chaos cast. And I like, you seem to like also the metric of the month from Grimoire Lab. I yes. That. And so maybe we could do a metric model of the month or a metric model of the season. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, do we have 12? <laughs> we'll have to have 12 if we do it in a month. Uh, is this something year? that the two group folks would want to help with? Or... Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think okay. any anything in here. This is like stuff that we can point Anna to. Like this is yeah. like the like these are what we're kind of proposing as as things that we want to develop and capture. Yep. So for sure. Yeah. So maybe that's important to a note. Um, we can also um, interview folks who are in the OSPO space. And just do like a hey, how is you know what what works for you or like just I don't know, general. Yeah, I would general. love to do that. Talk to right. them and interview them. Ask them on this. Okay, um, this sounds great. I'm always look say look, I turned it into model of the year. <laughs> yeah, that's about the level we're working at right now. Decade. I like <laughs> Every yeah. ten years, we'll talk about a model. We're, we're approaching our 10th year in chaos, so. Here's your one model it. you get. It'll be here in three years. Oh, it'll be worth it though. <laughs> All right, this is good. I, I like this. Um, 
maybe we should I, I should we should probably put this in the minutes just to yep. kind of capture the the details like the under the hood right. kind of stuff but so i mean i guess this could be there and do you want to put this in the readme yes I, i'll create a pr for this okay so let's put all of this into the and then um okay i'll this and then Okay, and I think that takes care of a lot of this, right? Yeah. Yes, like this has tried, uh, I tried to capture all these four points in this uh, summary and that's what we discussed today. Do you mind so, if I delete this out of the agenda? Yes. Just from a... Yep, it is screen. already in the previous meetings uh, record, so. Okay. Um, okay. Yep. Did you then, go ahead, go ahead, Bernard. Yeah, if you understand the next item in the agenda is uh, to define the focus areas where we like focus groups uh, that we want to work in this. Group. Okay. I to be honest with you, I had I had that. Where did that come from? What is this? I don't know. <laughs> Somebody has kept it over there. It's, it's like, gives me. Count of the focus area. Boink. <laughs> 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 Okay, so um, honestly, I don't particularly have, I think I looked at this, I don't particularly have a problem with any of these focus areas. Like, you know, we could get rid of value. Yep. Like organizational. Individual. Yeah. I mean, so, so the question is, does organization care about the individual? Uh, Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I look at some of these, like, yep. I don't know. I look more like at the, at some of the metrics themselves. And part of me is like, is this, like, is that really a metric? job opportunities that OSPOs care about. Like this has been a metric that has been hanging out like for a long yep. time. This is one of the first metrics that was developed in this group. Like there are just some in here that they just, they were, they were really like niche at the time. Right. And I just, I don't, I can tell you like working with OSPOs, I, this is not what I hear. Get right. Job opportunities. I mean, it might be one that we could like move down. Okay. That we can move down to like other or like right. old. Honestly, like I'm not even sure really how job opportunities measures the health of an open source community. The argument- I mean, somebody, you know, and, uh, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say the argument is the more job opportunities there are around Kubernetes, the healthier it is. Like, it's like a proxy measure, you know? Yeah. Like not a direct measure of the community. 
So it's like if there are more jobs around Kubernetes, more developer will be or people will be interested in getting involved in the Kubernetes. That's the argument. Whether or not, yeah, whether or not. I'm just thinking like there could be a, pro a project written in COBOL that is a super healthy project because it's awesome. It's an awesome community to be a part of. Maybe right. there's not a ton of jobs out there for it, but. Uh, no, okay. no, I, no, I hear you. And that's I, see, never, I see, yeah, I get it. But we haven't really, um, we don't use a lot of proxy measures in chaos. You know what I mean? Like kind of these secondary measures. Um, I think the closest we get is like social media mentions. You know, we do talk about that as a, and I think that would be similar to this. Yeah. But like everything else, like project velocity is like, that's like a, just a measure of things that are happening in the project, you know? Right. Project popularity, I think that's one of those proxy things. Yeah. Recommendability. I mean, okay, so wait, going back to job, job opportunities, I'm still stuck on that. So, I mean, maybe there is a case to be made for an OSPO, like if they're looking to use, and we did hear this when we were doing our research, um that companies use open source as a talent pool yeah that is so, true so i mean maybe there is something to be said for leaving it in here okay. and yeah and so maybe we can like get rid of that row yeah like the focus areas don't really again as we move yeah. to the new website they're not going to matter too much they're more just for our own right yeah. So yeah, could, get rid of it. We could do that. Delete. If, there. We're just uh, deleting all the things. So and it. then I can move these. Oops. Let's see. Okay. Just get our greens together. Okay. Yep. I mean, to me, this starts seeing like seeming like a. And then, honestly, at that point, like so, maybe this just moves up into this. Yeah, maybe uh, we should we have a academic OSPO as a focus area. I don't think so. And the reason is, is because like we could build a metric model called things academics care about <laughs> and right. it brings together. So to me, like this could just be project impact. Okay. I don't even know. But this metric was focused on the uh open source project developed by academy a oh, or academy then at that point maybe we just call it we just keep it as open academic open source project impact and we just put it up right. here it's, it's it's at the organizational level i care about or it's at the communal level i don't really care i'm just it seems silly to have it be its own yep thing cuz then my concern would be is that we'd have like funder you know, like uh, funding agencies care about open source projects. Right. And then we'd have like nonprofits and then we'd have for profits mm. as different focus areas. Yeah. What do you think, Elizabeth? I was going to say just get rid of all the focus areas, put all the greens together, all the purples together, all the yellows together. All just we one could, big We thing. could break new ground and just do that. <laughs> You yep. really could. That's how I'm consuming this anyway. So that's just my personal preference. Or like this doesn't do anything for you. Yep. Not at all. 26. Just nothing. Not at, all. Not at all. And I think we should also, as an aside, look at our considerings because they're quite substantial and they may not even be applicable any longer. So no, I'd like to, and sometimes I like to sometimes I, I'm concerned that if we just create these long lists of considerings, it creates an overwhelming amount of information and it makes you feel bad that you're not doing yeah. that. <laughs> like it's <Yeah>. not motivational. 
I have, if those are your thoughts, those are my thoughts around. Yeah. Yeah, no. And so that's why I'm saying like, if we put them all together, that's going to be like this gigantic list and we can just go through and be like, nah, <laughs> like some of these don't, like, I don't even know what some of the stuff is like earning potential. Like, why is that? Why would that matter to an OSPA? Like that's no longer applicable. Right. I agree. So Average kind of, salary. Yeah. Like those there. Right. Uh, thinking of creating uh, focus areas like uh, organizational or for uh, for profit or NGOs or government sector, I think there are many of the metrics will be overlapping in these groups. A same metric can be used by yeah, each agreed. four of them. Exactly. And so then, yeah, agreed. then we're kind of creating these artificial. Yep. So right. I. I I'm thinking of I'm going with Elizabeth, like getting rid of all of these. If in future, if we felt a need, we can again create the groups. That'll be our yeah, focus area. It's all the things. <laughs> yep. I think also just uh, as a point of note, I think that the folks in this metrics model or metrics group are going to have to, like, we're going to have to find a way to inform like new folks or like, I'm thinking of folks that join from the to-do group. We're going to have to think of a way to help keep them informed of what other metrics are being developed in other groups that yeah. might be applicable to them. Like oh, how do right. we, like, you know what I mean? Like bridge like that. Like that one, <laughs> in yeah. Riz, or yeah. like the dependency stuff they're working on. Yeah, yeah. Like so that's up. another challenge we have to solve. Oops, there. Yeah, no, I agree. Because then I'm starting to think, like, in this group, I mean, what if, kind of like the metric model working group, we're just like, here's the model I want. Like, we just start, right. you know what I mean? And if we need to develop a new metric, like like the OSPO working group is not actually a metric development working group. Yeah. I'm just saying, again, I'm just like kind of brainstorming ideas here. And we all we do is we just focus on people that come to this meeting and saying, you know, what are the contexts that you care about? Let's talk about right. assembling metrics that could help it's the model. Like, let's talk about assembly. And we can keep these, of course. Like, they're published. And we could, honestly, we could probably move them to other working groups. I mean, that's also fair. You know, we could we could probably relocate the, most of these into other groups if, if uh -huh. it came down to it. And then... And then we'll just take the model perspective. Yeah, well, you just take a model perspective and, and we may still develop metrics, but the metrics could be like in the evolution working group. Like we we take a little bit of time. Yeah, you know, like if the metric that OSPOs need that we don't have. Yep. And we just place we it. Develop and then add it to the evolution or to the yeah. common. And... and we'll do a lot of the work here. Like we can, yes. it's not like the evolution working group has to do the work. Yep. Yeah, because I think that group's a little light on attendance anyway, so it's going to be mostly Armstrong <laughs> doing that okay. work. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go, Armstrong. <laughs> Have fun. Um, but yeah, I, I think, and I think, you know, also it would be kind of interesting just to get a, a broader set of perspectives on some of these metrics. So I would, I mean, that would be awesome if we could do some of that work here. But yeah, I think it does make sense to, okay. to you know, push that off. Yeah. When I'm wondering too, like the, audience of the to-do group, they may not want to develop like atomic metrics. <laughs> it's it's, just, it's yeah. just too low level for what I'm yeah. trying to do. You know, like really what I'm looking to do is build the models that, that matter to me. Um, okay, I, this is interesting conversation actually. So maybe thinking in the mission, yes, we do develop the metrics, but depending on the need, we can yeah, customize as needed, it. Exactly. That as not, needed. Yeah, that's not our first thing that we do. Really, we're focusing yeah. on developing metrics models. 
that are Pods useful. Hospitals, yeah, needs. for the hospitals and trying and really spending our time trying to get them deployed as well. Yep. Yep. Like every every like 10 minutes that we can not do <laughs> on developing a metric just for a metric sake. Yep. Is 10 minutes that we can focus on a model or or sending Sean a Slack message <laughs> to, to deploy it in, <laughs> in Augur or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, so maybe I'm thinking like, uh, uh, maybe because of my academic background, I'm also thinking now it's the time to talk to the more OSPOs, like talk yeah, to them what time. they do. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe if they are not joining, uh, I, I don't know, like uh, how they turn out to be in the group or should we reach out to them and talk to them what they are looking for? Well, I think we can connect with Anna perhaps on that. Okay. Would be my okay. Thought. Okay. Okay. So at this point, I mean, maybe we, the remarks are like, where does this one, where does it go if anywhere? Like it, yep. we don't have to force uh, what was the one you had mentioned was a labor investment, Elizabeth? Uh, job job, job, opportunities. job yeah. opportunities and it's, labor investment is similar to me. You know, like job yeah. opportunities can go to the common like people uh, who what when. Labor investment it was one we are revising more on the organization side of perspective. See, but some of these are like they're impossible to get. Like, we want to know how much money a company is spending on employees working in a community, I think is how I read this. Yep. This like, is what how, we have been revising it in that way. How would we ever get this? So by calculating the time hour, tracking or yeah. And making that available. Oh, yeah, I guess you could yeah, do it for were... our own organization, I guess. Yeah. That would be it. Okay. Yeah, yep. it was internal, not like. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yep. Okay. Um, we, so maybe. We are at the end of time. So oh, I see that. This is an interesting conversation, though. Thank you. Yep. Um, okay. Delete. <laughs> Um, I won't do that right now. <laughs> okay. Please do, yes. I'm going to convert you one day, Elizabeth. You're just going to be like a, <laughs> a good way to get work done. <laughs> Tell me with emails, just mark all the threads. Delete. Delete. delete, delete. <laughs> thank you for your message. I'll reply soon. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for all joining. Right. Thanks. Thanks. Good. Bye. Bye, Anita. Okay. Bye.